TP53 is a tumor suppressor gene, and there's been some controversy regarding the prognostic impact of the characteristics of the mutations of TP53. As you can see, we are here in Chicago, and a look at TP53 mutations and outcome in patients with myelodysplastic syndrome. And to talk about this, I am with uh, Dr. Aziz Nasa, who is an MD at uh, Cleveland Clinic's Tosse Cancer Institute. First things first, what's the controversy been here that you're starting to address with this study? Sure, so TP53 mutation is a tumor suppressor gene that has been frequently described in myelodysplastic syndrome and uh, myeloid malignancies. Uh, several studies have shown that this gene actually mutations in TP53 is associated with very poor outcome. Although it's not really clear whether the mutation characteristics such as palatal frequency, location of the mutation, whether the mutation is passenger clone or dominant clone, these features impact the outcome. The other thing that uh, has been studies shown that TP53 uh, mutated patients have poor outcome after allogenic stem cell transplant, suggesting that maybe these patients should not offer transplant in the first place. But in these studies, the outcome with the transplant was not compared to the other available therapies, so it's not well established whether still the outcome Although it's poor, but it's still better than other therapies. So in this study, what we looked at is um, to define whether mutation characteristics uh, such as palatal frequency, location, and uh, other characteristics impact the prognosis, and whether the uh, outcome of the transplant is worse, better, or similar to other therapy. So what did you learn? So what we found, so we took 732 patients uh, with MDS and myeloid malignancies who treated at our institution between 2000 and 2012. Uh, we used a panel of 62 gene mutations along with TP53, and these mutations have been described as the most recurrent somatic mutations in myeloid malignancies. And what we found, we identified 73 patients among these about 10% who have TP53 mutations. In terms of clinical characteristics, uh, the patients who have TP53, TP53 mutation um, has had a higher white blood cell count presentation and a higher um, uh, bone marrow blast percentage, as well as expected, they have a higher risk of cytogenetics by IPSS and IPSSR and higher risk category by these scoring systems. But what we found that although the median overall survival for patients with MDS who harbor TP53 mutation was about 8.6 months, um, this survival differs depend on the mutation characteristics. So if the valid LA frequency of the mutation was less than 20 or equal to 25%, the median overall survival was about 12.8 months compared to 3.4 months when the valid LA frequency was more than 50%. When the mutation was described as um, dominant clone, the outcome was very poor with median overall survival of 2.2 month compared to 13.8 month when the mutation was described as a passenger clone. When we looked at the patients who receive actually transplant and compared them to the patient who did not receive transplant, the median overall survival for patients who with TP53 who received transplant was 14.8 uh, month compared to 8.9 month to the patient who did not receive transplant, and that was statistically significant, suggestive that although the outcome is still poor, transplant remains uh, the best available therapy today. So for the 10% that you found th this in, is that, that's pretty much what people had been expecting, right? Right. Yeah, so the um, prevalence of, uh, of TP53 mutation in MDS is about 5 to 10%. If you add secondary AML, it's probably about 15 to 20%. So bottom line now, what can TP53 mutations tell you? So I, I guess the question clinically when you encounter a patient with TP53 first is, what is the outcome? The outcome is poor, but again, it depends on the mutation characteristics of so the valid LA frequency less than 25%. Usually the outcome is still comparable with a high risk MDS that they don't have TP53 mutation. To date, uh, still, bone marrow transplant or allogenic stem cell transplant is the best treatment options for those patients, although the outcome is still poor and um, newer study and newer agents need to be explored on those patients. So it's really encouraged that all these patients enrolled on clinical trials with novel therapies. So there should be a little less controversy now that there's a little more data. 
it's possible, although our study uh, is still small, relatively right. small, and we need validation in a larger cohort of patients. But that's suggestive that what we have now, it's still that transplant remains the best available therapy. And from this particular meeting, please check Ash Clinical News for more, and also online, of course, where for American Medical Communications, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.